Conquering the vastness of space is one task that appears too daunting to the ordinary man. However, with the launch of the James Webb Telescope, we are well on our way to doing that. Not too long ago, we received access to the first five scientific images collected by the telescope on July the 12th, and they were far above expectations. These images carry information about the early cosmos, the birth and death of stars, galaxy collisions, and exoplanet atmospheres. Speaking of exoplanets, Proxima b is one of them, and recent signals received by the James Webb Telescope indicate signs of extraterrestrial life to scientists. The elements necessary for life are dispersed across the cosmos. While there is only known life on Earth, finding life elsewhere in the universe is a key objective of contemporary astronomy and planetary research. What is this strange signal coming from Proxima b, and how does it affect your everyday life on Earth? Let's find out. Now that the most potent space telescope in the world is operational, we may expect a steady stream of breathtaking images of the cosmos. There are simply a ton of galaxies, each one more intricate than you have ever seen, and there are too many stars to count, all of them sparkling with an intensity that had never been seen before by humankind. On July 12th, NASA made some of the first breathtaking pictures and data from the James Webb Space Telescope publicly available. The four targets, which consist of three images and a spectrum, exquisitely depict the infrared universe. On the night of July the 11th, President Joe Biden revealed a fourth image, a tightly concentrated ultra-deep field view during a live broadcast, displaying a universe that is older than anything we have ever seen. Together, the photos and data demonstrate the telescope's enormous potential to advance science and mark James Webb's transformation into a functional research tool. The three images are Carina Nebula, the Southern Ring Nebula, and Stevens Quintet groups of galaxies. The fourth target is the spectrum of a gas giant exoplanet called WASP 96b. 7,600 light years separate Earth and the Carina Nebula, one of the biggest and brightest nebulas in the sky. It contains Trumpa 14, one of the newest known star formation clusters, as well as Eta Carinae, a dying supergiant star on the verge of a catastrophic explosion. It spans over 300 light years across. The Carina Nebula is a large, active, and occasionally violent star nursery. There is so much activity here, and it is very stunning. The Webb's breathtaking view of the Carina Nebula's cosmic cliff gives fresh information about this enormous stellar nursery. We're also seeing brand new stars that were previously completely concealed from view. The Southern Ring Nebula, in comparison, is just 2,000 light years away from Earth. It is a planetary nebula, which is a growing gas cloud encircling a dying star. The dying white dwarf star at the center of the nebula is unbearably hot and emits intense ultraviolet radiation, illuminating the gas around it. It has blown off all of its outer layers. The new images display regions of the nebula where starlight peeks through, as well as the shells that gas formed. The Stevens Quintet is a collection of five galaxies that are 290 million light-years from Earth and appear absurdly near to one another. Three of the galaxies have elongated spiral-like structures as a result of their interactions, while the other two are locked in a sort of cosmic dance that will eventually cause the quartet to collide. The five stars in the quintet cover hundreds of millions of years of cosmic history, ranging from young to incredibly old. However, not every noteworthy image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope will be visually appealing. Some of them will be maps, like the one NASA revealed recently, which is made up entirely of lines, dots, and squiggles. That graph lacks the unique impact of Webb's perspective of galaxy clusters and the breathtaking quality of the Carina Nebula image. The modest charts, as well as the many others that the Webb Telescope will create over the following 20 years, is exciting in its own quiet way. 
our ability to imagine the characteristics of worlds far outside of our solar system will be stretched by these images. Of course, you must first be aware of what you are looking at. The chart provides comprehensive details on the atmosphere of a massive gaseous exoplanet that resembles Jupiter. About 1,150 light-years away from Earth, WASP 96b completes one orbit of its Sun in just three and a half days. Its interior is hotter than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, about 538 degrees Celsius. Since its discovery in 2013, WASP 96b, the only known cloudless planet, has been a mystery and a top target for additional research. Because of Webb's new data, scientists now have access to more information about that peculiar atmosphere. Webb was able to identify the telltale trace of water and even discovered indications of clouds by analyzing the starlight that entered the exoplanet's atmosphere. Clouds are quite unique on this planet, which is extremely hot. Rock can condense in the air like water does on Earth because it is so hot. Thus, the clouds on WASP 96b are composed of sand. Other than water, many other substances will condense under the proper pressure and temperature circumstances. By looking at the clouds outside our window, fluffy white puffs floating in a blue sky, suddenly Earth feels like it was always just one of the many, many planets in the universe, each with its own history and perhaps its own type of atmosphere. The Webb Telescope is ready to change our perception of exoplanets from mysterious cosmic objects to very real places with alien sky. The Milky Way galaxy alone contains an estimated 300 million potentially habitable planets, and several habitable Earth-sized planets are only 30 light-years away from Earth. These planets are essentially the galactic neighbors of humanity. Astronomers have found more than 5,000 of these exoplanets so far, utilizing various space telescopes and ground-based observatories. They are very good at determining an exoplanet's orbit, mass, density, and other basic characteristics when they are discovered. Additionally, they are becoming more adept at extracting information about their environments. The Webb mission will intensify that endeavor bringing to light previously undiscovered aspects of previously researched targets, opening up hitherto inaccessible worlds and potentially even spotting chemicals that are known to be indicative of the presence of life. The Webb Telescope uses the following method to study the exoplanet atmosphere. It directs its attention on a star system and waits, soaking up the incoming light. A planet enters our field of view and moves across the star's face, blocking a small amount of starlight. However, some light does get through, and on its way out of the planet, it passes through the atmosphere. The chemical identifiers of any gases present in those cloud tops are carried by the light as it approaches the Webb telescope. The light is dispersed by the telescope's detectors, much like how a glass prism divides sunlight into rainbow hues. Astronomers carefully examine such data, looking for indications of well-known chemicals and compounds, and then plot them all on a diagram, called a spectrum. The peaks in the WASP 96b spectrum show the presence of water vapor. It helps to be an experienced astronomer to recognize the signs of clouds and haze in certain conditions. How do the JWST observations relate to prior exoplanet observations, especially those made by the Hubble Space Telescope? The error bars on the new data were much narrower than those on earlier, more time-consuming observations, despite the Webb Telescope having only spent a few hours watching the exoplanet and its star. Additionally, Hubble found no evidence of clouds at all. Exoplanet researchers perceive the exoplanet spectrum to be equally as mystical as galaxy researchers perceived that deep field to be. However, determining whether a planet is habitable is not an easy task, and finding another Earth-like planet may be trickier than you think. 
A spectacular stellar system is located about 40 light years away. Five years ago, NASA announced that it and several partners had found a large number of Earth-sized planets orbiting within the habitable zone of a single star. This discovery made the TRAPPIST-1 system famous throughout the world. Since then, the astronomers have been eager to find out more information about these close worlds that might resemble Earth. Then comes the James Webb Space Telescope, whose initial cycle of research projects will involve studying the TRAPPIST-1 system. In the long run, the research will set up the process of looking for biosignatures that could indicate whether life was present on any of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system. The research will aim to determine whether the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system have atmospheres. But comprehending universes that are dissimilar to our own present several difficulties. Recent modelling work demonstrates that the distribution of land over a planet's surface has a substantial impact on its potential habitability, in addition to a planet's distance from its star and composition. Proxima Centauri b, an exoplanet the size of Earth, is being used by researchers as a model. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star like TRAPPIST-1. The planets could orbit these stars relatively closely and still be in the habitable zone since they are smaller and cooler than our Sun. Tidally locked Proxima Centauri b is similar to the TRAPPIST planets. Accordingly, the planet is symmetrical with one side always facing the star and the other always facing into space. Although there are no planets in our solar system that exhibit this phenomenon, exoplanets frequently do. Mercury was often believed to be tidally locked, but the reality was much different. However, the Moon on our planet has a similar configuration, with one side constantly towards us and the dark side always facing away. Because astronomers anticipate that one side of the planet will be significantly hotter than the other, tidal locking of exoplanets may have an impact on their habitability. However, an atmosphere with winds that disperse heat throughout the planet and make it more conducive for life could alleviate this. Since the side of the planet facing the star is always in the light, it is referred to as the day side and the other as the night side. The model demonstrated that there was less rain, higher temperatures and a greater temperature differential between day and night on planets with more land. More rain and clouds were present on planets with larger ocean basins. The volume of liquid ocean had an impact on the amount of water in the climate and the temperature of the world because ocean water might occasionally freeze into ice. The researchers discovered that even when the total amount of land remained constant, the distribution of that land may cause variations in the average surface temperature of a tidally locked planet of up to 20 degrees Celsius. Applying this theoretical research to actual data on exoplanets presents a hurdle because it is difficult to determine how much of a planet is land and how much is ocean by looking at spectra like those James Webb will collect. As a result, James Webb will start studying the TRAPPIST-1 system in its first year of scientific research. It will be incredibly exciting to learn more about these exoplanets. It won't be simple to identify a habitable planet from billions of kilometers away, so don't start making plans to migrate to Earth 2 just yet. However, this preliminary evidence demonstrates that James Webb Telescope is able to recognize minute chemical traces in exoplanet light. Astronomers will use JWST to find substances other than water that are more interesting to study, such as oxygen, methane and carbon dioxide, or, even better, more than one substance in the same atmosphere. However, the telescope can only closely examine a few of the closest possibly habitable planets because Webb was not built to look for extraterrestrial life. Additionally, it is limited to detecting changes in atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour. Webb is unable to detect the presence of unbonded oxygen, which is the greatest indication of life, 
even though certain mixtures of these gases may be suggestive of life. Astronomers must determine the precise source of the intriguing phenomenon once it is only detected by the space telescope. But Webb will acquaint us with a variety of alien atmospheres in the cosmos until the next major space telescope appears. Exoplanet research will take up over a quarter of the telescope's first year of observations. There are other types of atmospheric gases and stranger clouds that astronomers can look for. They can even use the data to anticipate the surfaces of extraterrestrial life and speculate about what might be hidden beneath the clouds. We can learn more about the worlds beyond us, particularly small, rocky planets like Earth, orbiting at the perfect cozy distance from their star, possibly habitable worlds, by developing hypotheses about how and when these planets arose. The advanced idea for future, even more powerful space telescopes includes plans to obstruct the bright light of a planet's host star to reveal starlight reflected back from the planet. This idea is similar to using your hand to block sunlight to better see something in the distance. Future space telescopes could use small internal masks or large external umbrella-like spacecraft to do this. Once the starlight is blocked, it becomes much easier to study light bouncing off a planet. Unfortunately, the majority of gases produced by terrestrial life can also be created by non-biological means. Methane is a gas that is released by both cows and volcanoes. In addition to producing oxygen through photosynthesis, sunlight also breaks water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. When searching for extraterrestrial life, there is a good likelihood that astronomers will find some false positives. Astronomers must have a thorough understanding of a planet of interest to determine whether its geologic or atmospheric processes could resemble a biosignature in order to help rule out false positives. The next wave of exoplanet research may be able to meet the standard for the remarkable evidence required to establish the reality of life. The James Webb Space Telescope's first data release gives us a preview of the great advancements to come. We are at the beginning of a daring new age in space science. A lot of paperwork is arriving quickly. The new images it has produced are some of the most in-depth infrared views of spiral galaxies that we have ever seen. Scientists have not yet conducted an analysis, so we will be waiting eagerly to see what Webb's data will show. We are content to savour the extraordinary beauty in the meanwhile. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.